it's a fairly basic principle. In fact, um, it's kind of difficult to imagine um, um, this uh, working in a, the nature working in any other way. Somehow that if you're moving the laws of physics change, that would make physics actually very challenging. That would make science itself very challenging. Uh, so this is where I want to introduce a couple of things that seemed to threaten this principle of relativity. Um, let me start out with the easy example. How fast does a sound move? Yeah, let me round it down to 340 meters per second. <laughs> so speed of sound, uh, let me write it down somewhere. So speed of sound, it's about 340 meters per second at room temperature, one atmosphere, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you could see the sound waves coming out of my mouth, you would see it moving at 340 meters per second. What if um, what if this uh, source of sound was on a train? So uh, let's say this is a source of sound, and the sound waves are going in either directions. If the train is uh, stationary, then each of these wave fronts. As you look at it, it's moving at 340 meters per second. 340 meters per second. Like that, right? If a uh, train is stationary, now imagine that the train is moving at some you know, reasonable speed. Let's say that the train is moving at some speed of, hmm, that's a reasonable speed. 40 meters per second, that's like 80 miles per hour. So the train is moving at 40 meters per second. Like if you're standing out here looking at those sound waves, would they still move at 340 meters per second? No, it'll change, right? What does your intuition tell you? As you're observing it out here, what is the speed of sound from out here? Yeah, plus 40 meters per second. So from out here, you would see the wave speed of 380 meters per second for the sound wave that's moving in the same direction as the train. What about the sound wave that's going the other way? You'd be surprised. Like All this is very intuitive. That's why even, well, sorry, I don't mean to sound dismissive. That's why it, people could have figured this out even before time of Newton, before there was loss of physics or something. I don't know. Um, so, uh, so this would be a 300 meters per second. And in fact, this, is, um, this leads to something called the Doppler effect that we could have covered when we were doing waves, but we kind of skipped. Um, so these changes of speed of sound is what leads to Doppler effect. Um, there are videos on YouTube where um, people record a, a, a fire engine passing by them. As it's coming towards you, the sound um, the sound, I guess, sounds uh, at higher pitch. Um, wait, is that right? Yeah, higher pitch, and it's, it's moving away from you, it's at lower pitch. And it's tied to how speed of sound changes as, um, as the source is moving. Good? Now, does this fact, um, it, does that seem contradictory in any way with your sense of principle of relativity? Like the way you guys gave me these num answers was intuitive. Principle of relativity is also intuitive based on everyday intuition. Is there any disagreement between these two? Like are you okay with the fact that speed of sound um, in this reference frame, 340 meters per second, and the speed of sound from where I stand are different. Yeah, it's all okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess, uh, you know, um, the way you could, so, um, let me slightly reword this. So given that the laws of physics are the same, supposed to be the same in all reference frames, all inertial reference frames, what makes this inertial reference frame special compared to where I'm standing? That 
you know, in this reference frame, you could say speed of sound is 340 no matter what direction it's going, but from where I'm standing, speed of sound changes depending on the direction. Like, what's special about that reference frame? It's moving at constant velocity. As it's moving, what else is moving at constant velocity with the train? Well, speed is not a thing. Well, wave is also not a thing, right? Because wave is the disturbance. I want an object that I can say is moving with it. That's a, that. Okay, the source. Um, so this is something uh, common with all waves, except for one, <laughs> which you are getting to. The medium for the sound wave is moving along with it. So the medium for the sound wave here is air, and in fact, the number that Javier gave us, specific to the properties of air. If you make the air thinner, denser, then it'll change things. Um, so this is the only reference frame where air is stationary on average. That's why the, the speed of sound didn't depend on the direction. From out here, the air itself is moving. So um, the, this speed of sound, what it is is really it's relative, relative to air. That's why everything that we are describing here intuitively is all consistent. So you make the air move, then you know, speed of sound will sort of add to that movement of air. And you could get the same thing if there's a like, wind blowing past. Wind will also just throw the sound waves off, of course. Good? OK. So this is all good. Um, so with the, so, uh, so, since, um, so air or I guess uh, medium for sound wave. So, um, so most people didn't have problem with the principle of relativity. It fits with everyday experience. When you are describing things like waves, sound waves, um, then, um, then you can describe how it fits into the principle of relativity by saying that the speed of sound is relative to the medium that the wave is traveling in. So you make the, yeah, you make the special whatever.